What is faith? Webster's Dictionary says it's being confident in something. I can't remember what all that says. It's a Hebrew what? Hebrews 11. better? The will on the tape, won't it, Bubba? <laughs> oh, that's... That's next week, I think. What is today? Nursing home, 4 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you, babe. Yeah. Nursing home, 4 o'clock. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance of thing to hope, things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I think that's as good a description of faith, way better than what Webster's got. It's evidence of things not seen. Faith is believing something you cannot see. Amen. You can't put your hands on it. You can't hold it. If, if, you can, if you can grab a hold of it and hang on to it, you know you got it. So you don't, it don't take any faith to do that. And so many people say that about healing and and. And things they need for God. Well, when I get it, then I'll believe it. No. you got to believe it before you get it. And that's faith. And people say, well, I just don't have any faith. <coughs> yeah, you do. Hebrews also tells us in 11, chap chapter 11 and verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Who's him? Capital letters, God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. We can't see him, but we know he's there. That's faith. We trust that God will do what God says he will do. That's faith. We believe what his word says. We can see his word, but we can't, you know, all of the promises and stuff that's in here, it's kind of hard to get a hold of sometimes. So we have to believe by faith. For he who comes to God must be first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, if we're seeking something we can't see, how do we do that? By faith. Faith gets us out of bed in the morning. We have faith that our heart's going to beat 70, 80 times a minute. And we're going to breathe 24 to 30 times a minute. Because what happens if either one of them don't work? You better hope your faith gets you to where you want to be going. <laughs> Amen? We believe there's something after this. There's, there's more to life than the 60 to 100 years we spend on this earth. We believe that. But how do we know that? We don't physically know it because we can't see it has anybody in here ever seen heaven I haven't but I guarantee it's there it's by faith we trust that what God tells us is true and that when we quit breathing if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior we're going to heaven I don't want to go to the other place I don't know about any of you but I don't want to go to the other place But how, people say, well, oh, how do I get faith? God has given you faith. No, I don't believe that. Well, 
Whether you believe it or not, it's true. Romans chapter 12. In verse 3, the last part of that verse says, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. We're born with faith because God has given us faith. Well, I just don't have enough faith to believe that all that's true. I need my faith to grow stronger. Well, have any of you ever seen a mustard seed? I don't know that I've seen one, but it's 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 my belief that I'll do it on the back side of this paper it makes it a little bigger. That it's not much bigger than that dot on that piece of paper. It's right there. Hold on. Right there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Mustard seed's not very big. But you know what? <coughs> Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20 that if you have the faith the size of that mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it will obey you. That's pretty cool. And honestly, it takes more faith to believe in a God you can't see can save your soul from hell than it does to believe that that God you can't see can heal you. It takes more faith to believe in salvation than it does to believe in healing. But everybody, for the most part, everybody here believes in salvation, right? We're saved. By the grace of God, we're saved. We have faith to believe that somebody we can't see that's built a city that we're going to live in that we can't see can save us and take us to that city, but we can't believe that he can heal us. God has dealt each one of us a measure of faith. It is our job to get into God's word and study his word and build our faith. He's gave us a little bit. It's our job to build it. Amen? Amen. Back over to Hebrews. I should have told you, kept your finger there, but that's okay. Faith has been around since God created us. It says here in chapter in verse 4 that by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now I got a feeling you know Cain had never seen a baby born. He was the first one. But Abel seen his brother born. But what do you think he thought when mom and dad said, you know, we weren't born. We were built. That took, that, now that would take some faith, right? To believe that a God you can't see can take dirt and make you out of dirt and breathe into you, your dirt nostrils and you come alive. But yet he believed what his mom and dad told him and offered sacrifices to God. A God he'd never seen, most likely had never talked to like his dad did since because his dad could only communicate through prayer after they were kicked out of the garden because God didn't come and walk amongst them after they got kicked out like they did in the garden. It'd take a lot of faith, to, you know, after, you know, Cain, I could see Cain believing it because he had never seen somebody born. 
but Abel was going out. No, 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 mom, dad. I seen how Cain got here. That's how we all got here. Yeah, that's how you and he got here. But we didn't. Ours was a whole different deal. I wonder if he really thought his mom and dad had really starting to lose it. <laughs> you know? But you think about that. They have to explain to their children that they didn't come to be the way most kids come to be. That this God out there somewhere we've never seen took dirt, made your dad, put your dad to sleep, took a rib out of his side and some more dirt, and made mom. I can see him out there. I wonder if this is going to work. Mom, that ain't how it happened because I tried it. It didn't work. <laughs> but you see, where we're, you see what I'm saying? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. We believe it even though we can't see it. We still believe it, and nothing can change our mind. It's, you know, it's kind of like those poor people over in Iraq right now. They believe it. And they're losing their lives because of it. But nothing's going to change their mind. Even a threat of death is not going to change their mind because they have the faith that Abraham and Cain or Abel and Enoch and Noah and all of those guys back there five, six thousand years ago that didn't have what we have today. All they had is what was handed down through history. They didn't have Jesus to rely on. They didn't they don't have they didn't have the New Testament that tells us all the neat stuff that Jesus did. They had to rely on tradition and history that was handed down generation to generation. But they believed. Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, up until that point I've been told it had never rained. There was always dew and moisture but it had never really rained up until the time of the ark and here's this guy sitting out in the middle of the desert I love that's that old story the Bible the old version that's got Richard Harris and uh, George Scott you know playing Abraham this guy playing Noah, he, he's gathering stuff up. He's working around. He picks his stuff up and goes in the house. And Noah, you see him looking around. Noah, he drops what he's got in his hands and he looks out the door. Noah, he didn't know who it was. He had never heard God speak before. So I want you to build me a boat. Okay. Why? Because I'm going to make it rain. And you're going to need a boat. And this is how big I want you to build it. And I can. And, and he's he he comes outside and he gets outside and he starts walking. He goes counting off. How big this thing's supposed to be, you know? And then him and his boys start building a boat. It had never rained. They had never seen rain in their life. But God said it's going to rain. So they build a boat. That's faith. Something that has never happened is going to happen. And I can just imagine, you know, it took years to build this boat. Out in the middle of the desert, 
And all of the people come around and laughing and hee-hawing and gigging and, you know, you are building up. How are you going to get it to water? You know? It ain't like he's building a little canoe. He's building a boat. I've been told it's like two football fields long and almost a football field wide. I mean, it was huge. They don't even have a creek. How are you going to float this thing? God said it's going to rain. <laughs> yeah, right. What's rain? But anyway, he believed. Moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. He believed in something that he could not see telling him to do something that seemed really, really stupid but he did it anyway and he saved his whole household and all of the animals I do wish he'd have smashed them two skeeters <laughs> but anyway Well, anyway. It goes on here. Let's see. Make sure I'm going to write it. Yep. In verse 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to the place. He would receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in a land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob and the heirs with him of the same promise. He didn't know where he was going. We talked about that last week. Pack up your house and go. Take your wife and go. Where are we going? I'll show you when you get there. Not this woman. Because she's going to want to know how many clothes to pack. Well, just pack up the whole house because we ain't coming back. Where are we going? I don't know. God said go. Well, who's God? I don't know. He, talk, he talked to me in the dark and told me to pack up and go. And she says, I'll call your shrink. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go to the doctor, boy. Anyway. All of these people, verse 13, all of these people, from Adam all the way down to Abraham, all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. What was the promise? The promise was, if you do what I tell you to do, you will have eternal life. They didn't have Jesus to believe in. They just trusted in God by faith that they would have what God said they would have. Enoch trusted God, and he didn't die. He was walking with God one evening, and God just took him to heaven. Same way with, was it Elisha? That went up in the fiery chariot? They're coming back by the way we'll get into that when we get into our study in the book of Revelation but there's there's two witnesses coming back I believe it's Enoch and Elisha and they are going to uh, convict this world of what's going wrong during the tribulation we on the other hand aren't going to be here we're going to get to watch that from heaven praise God <laughs> amen so but anyway we talked last night just a little bit last week I mean about Abraham and Isaac. When, Isaac when Abraham took Isaac and sacrificed him to God Genesis chapter 22 I was reading this this week because I didn't know where we were at in our Bible challenge so I just started reading 
chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Now take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Morah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey. And I had never really read the rest of this until I was actually watching that movie, The Bible, on TV the other night. And it was part of it was Abraham taking Isaac up on the mountain. I didn't realize this part till I read it. And he took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place which God had told him and on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place far off I didn't know he took anybody with him but he took two of his servants with him so if that kind of blows the thought well we're going to go do this, but I'm going to just go do it by myself so nobody can see what I'm doing. Kind of blows that theory, don't it? He took two witnesses with him. And Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. This is the cool part. And we will come back to you. Now, how did he know Isaac was coming back. God had told him to take Isaac up on the mountain and offer him as a sacrifice. But yet he told his servants, you stay here, we're going to go worship, and we will come back. That's faith. That's believing in something you know ain't true. But something's going to have to happen to make that come true. Something drastically is going to have to happen. And that is revealed to us in Hebrews. Paul brings to light what Abraham was thinking when he took Isaac back in chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. For by faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. 1117, Bubba, sorry. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said in Isaac, your seed will be called. Remember, God told him when Isaac was born that his seed would be as numerous as the sands of the seashore and the stars in the sky. Abraham knew that was a promise that God had given him, that Isaac's seed would cover this world. Concluding that, God was able to raise him up even from the dead from which he also received him in a figurative sense. Abraham believed by faith, God commanded me to do this. God has also said this son of mine is going to raise up nations. The, his, his descendants will be as numerous as the sand of the seashore or the stars in the sky. Abraham knew that there was only one thing that could happen. When he offered Isaac as a sacrifice to God, God was going to raise that boy back up from the dead. He knew that. That's the only way God's promises of his covenant could be fulfilled. And God never breaks a covenant. So when Abraham said to the servants, you stay here, we're going to go up and worship, and we're coming back. He knew either 
two things was one of two things was going to have to happen. God was either going to raise Isaac from the dead or he was going to supply a substitute. He supplied the substitute of a lamb caught in a bush that took the place of Isaac. Just as the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, took our place on Calvary's cross. Faith. All you've got to have is that itty bitty mustard seed sized faith to believe that when you say something, it's going to happen. God could have built this world the same way he made Adam and Eve with his hand. But he spoke this world into existence because he knew that when he said it, it was going to happen. Abraham believed God. He trusted God with everything he had. And when he said, you take Isaac up on that mountain and you offer him as a sacrifice to me, he knew that God was either going to raise him from the dead or he was going to provide a substitute. And in that same story, we see the story of our substitute, Jesus Christ coming from heaven to take our place on the cross of Calvary so we don't have to. And that's faith. Believing in something you cannot see because God said it was so. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, for faith. I thank you, Father, for sending Jesus to be our substitute. Just as you sent the lamb to be the substitute for Isaac, you sent Jesus to be our substitute. And, Father, we thank you for that. We praise you for that. We give praise and glory to Jesus for volunteering to come and to die on the cross for us that we might be accepted, adopted into your family as children of God. And we thank you for it and we praise you for it. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We are dismissed.